there's a 28 year old male who's complaining of low backache on examination Schober test is positive from the knowledge of your orthopedics that you might have had you know a Schober test basically tests what it tests the flexion of the spine so it means there is some disease which is causing abnormalities in the flexion of the spine the orthopedician orders an x-ray of lumbar spine and he wants to know which of the following is true so I want to have a I want you to have a look at this particular x-ray and I can say with almost 100% guarantee that all of you will say that it is nothing but ankylosing spondylitis. That is why I've chosen a very characteristic x-ray for my discussion. But what is this disease? How does it behave? What are the various questions that can be asked? This is what we're going to learn in this particular session. Now, to begin with, ankylosing spondylitis. Let's split the two words. Let's take ankylosing separate and spondylitis separate. First discuss spondylitis. Spondylitis means anything to do with spine. Itis means inflammation. So it means it is some disease which is causing some inflammatory reaction in the spine. So the answer is solved. Which of the joints are going to be involved? It's going to be involving the various joints between the vertebra and the vertebra and the iliac plates. What are these joints called? Within the vertebra, the various joints that join the vertebra are the facetal joints. And the most important joint which joins the vertebra to the iliac plates is the SI joint not it doesn't join the vertebra as it basically joins the sacral vertebra to be more specific to the iliac plate so these are the two points we are likely to be involved why it is ankylosing what do we know about ankylosing ankylosing means fusion and we already have discussed that the end product of all inflammatory arthritis is fusion or ankylosis just as in tb it's fibrosis in bones it is ankylosis it means it is some form of disease which is causing ankylosis that is fusion of bones and it is also causing spondylitis. So if somebody asks you which is the most common joint to be involved, again, there are so many joints in the spine starting from the various uh, facetal joints and the SI joints. So when we stand or when we sit, which is the area which bears the maximum brunch? So it's quite easy to understand. It's basically the sacroiliac joints which are the most involved in weight-bearing axis of the body. So obviously, if there is a disease which has to involve the entire spine, if there is an additive stress of this uh, weight-bearing, in sacroiliac joints, it will obviously involve the sacroiliac joints first. So SI joints are the first joint to be involved in ankylosing spondylitis. Now I'll introduce you to a new term called enthesitis. First of all, let us understand what is enthesis. Enthesis is the area where the bone is joined by a ligament or a tendon. I mean, in other terms you can say when a tendon, where a place where the tendon or a ligament attaches to a bone that is called as enthesis. So any inflammation of the in that particular area or the inflammation of the enthesis is called as enthesitis. Ankylosing spondylitis is nothing but it is an enthesitis. This is the only second thing you have to remember because all its manifestations are going to be dependent upon this word enthesitis. So what we've discussed so far, ankylosing spondylitis, most common joint involved is the sacroiliac joint and is a type of enthesitis and it involves the various other joints of the vertebral column. Now that we know that SI joints are the first one to be involved in ankylosing spondylitis, I would like to ask you one question. Which of the investigations out of the three X-ray, CT or MRI is best for looking at sacroiliitis? Let's think about it in a more conceptual fashion. What is ankylosing spondylitis doing? It is causing some form of inflammation. It is causing enthesitis. So what will inflammation cause? Edema. Now can you look at edema on an X-ray or on a CT scan? You must have seen a lot of x-rays, but have you ever ever heard your consultant saying there is edema in the bone? No, because x-rays will show only the bony cortex, but edema will occur in the marrow, the marrow part of the bone. And can we see the marrow on x-ray or CT? No, both of them can not show any marrow or marrow edema. So what is the investigation of choice? What is the investigation which shows marrow best? It is nothing but MRI. So the investigation of choice in the cases of early sacroiliitis would be MRI. Now, if the examiner goes one step ahead and asks you which of the particular sequences of MRI is most useful, and that is STIR. Again, the full form of this sequence is very long. It's, it's, it's called as short tau inversion recovery sequence. But for now, I just want you to remember STIR. And what does the sequence does? It is responsible for suppressing all the fat. So all the inflammatory areas or the edematous area will shine out. You can see this is the SI joint. And you can see that there is marrow edema which is appearing at bright or hyper intense signal which is present on both sacral as well as iliac articular surfaces. You can also see the same on the coronal image. Just keep a pictographic memory of this particular thing. Now, let us suppose that disease has progressed further and the disease name is what? Ankylosing spondylitis. In the end, what will happen? There will be complete fusion of the bones. The fusion will be cortical also. So, for looking at the fusion, 
you can go ahead and you can do a CT. Let us look. Let us look at this particular CT. Can you see any any bone, any joint space between the uh, sacroiliac joints on the other side? No, it has been completely obliterated. So it is the end stage disease in which there is complete fusion of the sacroiliac joints. Now that we've discussed the various findings that we expect to see in a sacroiliac joint, now let us move to the spine because it is spondylitis. So what will happen in the spine? See, I have drawn a vertebral column uh, for you and in this I've drawn three different structures with three different colors. One of them which is red colored is located along the anterior part of the vertebral bodies. So what it is going to be called? A ligament located along the anterior part of the vertebral bodies, anterior longitudinal ligament. There is a blue colored structure which is located along the posterior aspect of the vertebral bodies. This is another ligament because it is located posteriorly, it is called as posterior longitudinal ligament. And between the various vertebral bodies, we have these yellow colored structures which support the end plates. These are called as annulus fibrosis. These are the areas where the ligaments are attaching to the bones in the spinal column. As we talked about what is ankylosing spondylitis, it is enthesitis. So probably it is going to involve these areas where the ligaments are being attached to the bone. If I go one step ahead and if I ask you, where do you expect these ligaments to be attached most closely? So they are obviously going to be attached to the corners of the bone because it's a just a ligament, so it is going to be hinged to the vertebral body at the corners. So it is the first site which will be affected once ankylosing spondylitis sets in or enthesitis sets in. That is going to be obviously the the corners of the vertebral bodies. So this type of an appearance which occurs because of the involvement of the corners, the entero superior corners of the vertebral bodies is given different named signs. Let us try to discover what are the signs. What will happen in the first phase of the disease when the disease is active, when there is enthesitis? There will be inflammation. What will inflammation do? It will increase the blood supply. So at all these corners, the blood supply would be increased because here is where the enthesis is lying. And once blood supply is going to be increased, there's going to be erosions. So these erosions will occur in the entero superior corners of the vertebral bodies. And this type of sign will be called as a Romanus sign. Now let us suppose that the inflammatory process of the stages of the inflammatory stage of the disease is over. What will body do? Body will try to repair all the deficit that has undergone. What are the deficits? That is that all these erosions are being done. Body will try to take care, take care of them. And how will the body take care of them? It will keep on depositing more calcium over them because there was erosions. Body will sense there are erosions. Let me deposit. Let me repair it by depositing calcium over it. And once the body deposits calcium over it, they will shine out. They will become more bright. And this type of an appearance is called as shiny corner sign. Now let us suppose that a disease has, goes, has gone far ahead. It is untreated. What will happen to the ALL and the PLL? Now, now the second stage of ankylosing has started to set in. So what will happen? The ALL and the PLL will start getting calcified or ossified. Now in this process what will happen? The spine will become straight just like a bamboo. This type of an appearance of a spine which is stiff and straight is called as the bamboo spine or poker spine. Now you would say sir, it is good to have one spine. Why to have so many vertebra? Why did God create so many vertebras one above the other? You might have played carom board. If you place all the coins of carom board one over the other, there is more chance of falling on those coins. Similar is the case with the vertebra, but still God made different vertebral bodies rather than creating one single spine. Why? Because it helped us to move. All these movements of flexion and extension are possible because we have different vertebral bodies stacked over the other. Can you make, if there was a spine was one, just one rod like structure, it would definitely be very stiff and if you try to move it, it will break. So for the purpose of providing movements at the spine, the God made different vertebral bodies. But what has happened now? Now the spine is behaving as one. So this spine is likely to get fractured, to get injured. One more thing that will happen is because this anterior and posterior longitudinal ligaments will become calcified or ossified and the bamboo spine, they will try to pull the vertebral bodies. Now when suppose that this is a normal vertebral body, if this ALL and PLL, they have undergone some form of ankylosis. So what it will do? They will change the shape of the vertebral bodies and the vertebral body will become almost square shaped. So this is squaring of vertebra, another sign that you can be finding in ankylosing spondylitis. Lastly, what will happen? There, come, there will be complete fusion of the anterior longitudinal ligament, posterior longitudinal ligament and there will be ankylosis as the facetal joints as well. Now let us try to understand what will be happening at the level of the IV disc. We already discussed about ALL and PLL ossification but here is another emphasis at the level of annulus fibrosis. So here also subinflammation is going to take place. So in the paradiscal end plates there will be some form of inflammation. 
and what will be called as it will be called as dyspondylodiskitis but it is an infective condition no it is an inflammatory condition so this type of a spondylodiskitis where you find something abnormal or abnormal signal intensity located at the vertebral end plates is being given a fancy name called as anderson's lesions anderson's lesions so quite easy to remember just summarizing all of the th all of the findings that we just studied ALL, PLL and annulus fibrosis, these are the three areas where nothing but where the ligamentous attachment is occurring. Because it is anthocytis, ALL will be involved first. ALL is involved, where is ALL attached? ALL attached to the corners. So first there will be erosions of the corners called Romanus sign. Then there will be sclerosis of the corners which is called as shiny corner sign. Then once ALL and PLL both get ossified, there will be a bamboo spine. They will pull the vertebra. So there will be a appearance of a squaring of the vertebral bodies. And once there is involvement of the intervertebral discal areas, they will be resulting in Anderson's lesions. So this is all what we have discussed till now so now let's look at few of the other signs in ankylosing spondylitis we've already talked about ALL and PLL and their ossification but are these the only ligaments which are present between the vertebral bodies no there are other ligaments as well look at this particular example what can we see we can see that the ligament which was joining the spinous processes has calcified or ossified so this type of an appearance is looking like a dagger if there is going to be a calcification or ossification of the interspinous ligament, it is going to be called as a dagger sign. Now, there is one more ligament apart from the interspinous ligament which you need to know. This ligament is present between the transverse processes on either side. So, if both the uh, tra intertransverse ligaments get ossified or calcified, it will give rise to what in appearance? It will give rise to a railroad track sign. And what if the interspinous ligaments also gets ossified so now you'll get three lines it is also called by the name of trolley track sign so these are the other signs that you can expect in ankylosing spondylitis so now let's look at the complication once we know that the spine has become very brittle very rigid because it's a bamboo spine what will happen you must have all eaten carrots in your home how do we eat carrot we put it in our mouth when we eat it raw and then you just break it apart similar is the thing which will happen in this particular case the spine because of being very brittle will break apart and it will result in formation of what we call as a carrot stick fractures another important thing i want you to have a look in this particular case is you can see a large number of osteophytes which are present along the anterior aspect of the vertebral bodies these are bridging the various parts of the bone bridging the various parts of the vertebra so these are called as bridging syndesmophytes which is again desmophytes which is again one of the very characteristic feature of ankylosing spondylitis so let's revise what we studied we just we studied that if there is ossification of the interspinous ligament it is going to give rise to a dagger sign if there is an ossification or calcification of the intertransverse ligaments on either side it will give rise to a railroad track sign if both of them get ossified it will result in trolley track sign anderson's lesions because of the involvement of the paradiscal areas of the vertebral bodies or the vertebral end plates because their annulus fibrosis is attached so there will be Anderson's lesions complications we've discussed about carrot stick fractures and what is the clinical clue this are the two things which we need to discuss so as we talked about ankylosing spondylitis the most important clinical clue that the exam will be given you is HLA B27 in case of rheumatoid arthritis the clinical clue was RA factor while in case of ankylosing spondylitis the clinical clue is HLA B27 Last but not the least, this disease is the one which is having systemic manifestations also. What are the various systemic manifestations? You need not remember all of them. One is uveitis, the other is inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's. It is, can be associated with either of them.